Five reasons why the narcissist devalues. All narcissists devalue, but not necessarily everybody receives a devaluation. In essence, we have two forms of devaluation. There is the sustained devaluation that is reserved for the primary source, and that's usually the intimate partner primary source, although it can happen towards a non-intimate partner primary source as well. Then there are what are known as corrective devaluations. These are more akin to slaps on the wrist. They can certainly be particularly unpleasant, but they are shorter in duration. And these are used more to steer control, to nullify the threat to control, rather than continue to do it over and over again towards an appliance that has been painted black. The sustained devaluation is that which is experienced by the intimate partner primary source sometimes can occur with regard to a non-intimate partner primary source, i.e. an individual that the narcissist sees a lot, spends a lot of time with. You can have repeated corrective devaluations doled out against you, so it might seem like you're in a sustained devaluation, but if you're a secondary source, you are not going to be spending as much time with the narcissist, and therefore it is not sustained in that sense. You might, for instance, be ignored all afternoon in the presence of a narcissist when you're the secondary source. And that is part of a form of devaluation used against you. And whilst one would see it as being sustained for that afternoon, it's not sustained in the same sense as it is against an intimate partner primary source. So in general terms, the distinction is that the sustained devaluation is usually experienced by the intimate partner primary source, sometimes non-intimate partner primary source, and the issue of corrected devaluations is doled out as against secondary and tertiary sources. Now, you'll be familiar with the fact that one day you are cock of the walk, and the next day you are a feather duster. You are atop the pedestal, and in a flash you have been thrown from it, and you are lying in the dust as we stand over you, berating you. The sudden switch from hero to zero, from princess to pauper, from good person to bad person, is often the most confusing, bewildering and upsetting part of our behaviour. It of course creates a cognitive dissonance. Uh, people cannot comprehend why they were being fated as the love of our life on Monday, and then by Tuesday they are the devil incarnate. It is something which causes, and of course this is required, victims of our nefarious behaviour to cling on to us in order to get an answer as to why this has happened, to receive an explanation and some kind of reasoning which will allow you to make sense of what has happened. Generally, you won't accept what has happened, the presence of the addiction and emotional thinking, the hold of the seduction, the presence of the golden period, prevents acceptance of this sudden fall from grace for a very long time. But if you are able to understand why it happened, you are able to move yourself forward with greater speed than you would otherwise. Remember, our reasons appear illogical to you based upon your altered perspective to ours, but at least you will have the reasons, and that is more than you would ever ordinarily receive from the narcissist that you are personally involved with, as the unaware narcissist simply cannot tell you, and an aware narcissist would choose not to. And instead, the relevant narcissist would plough on with your devaluation, offering no cogent or realistic expe explanation for this sudden switch. In this video, I'm not explaining why we devalue you. Of course, that is born out of the need to assert control, obtaining fuel, possibly character traits and residual benefits. I'm explaining what it is that causes us to suddenly move from white to black in the blink of an eye. What causes this sudden change, this 180 degree swing, this vault fast, this switch? Invariably, you're given no explanation by the narcissist, or if you are, 
then it will be nothing to do with the real genuine reason as to why we suddenly idealize you and then devalue you. These five reasons are utilized to assert control over you, to keep you in situ, have you pursuing that elusive explanation as we will continue to drain you, drawing negative fuel from you, unless, of course, a disengagement trigger then follows. Here are five reasons which are the triggers for devaluation. Number one, you become stale. When you are drawn under our control, be it intimately or as a friend or as a colleague, we invariably do so in a benign way. And this results in the provision of control and enables us to gather your positive fuel. In the beginning and for some time afterwards, we are invigorated by this precious fuel that you supply to us. We are, of course, reliant on it. We want it and need it, although most narcissists don't realize this, and it edifies us and makes us feel powerful. With regard to the relationship between you and the narcissist, the provision of your positive fuel and our reliance upon it could last months or even years, dependent upon the level of demand and your position in the fuel matrix. However, the problem is, is that where you are an intimate partner primary source, and therefore we are with you a lot of the time, your wonderfully potent and positive fuel soon becomes stale to us. It becomes boring. And this results in effect in you being devalued. We in effect regard you as being complacent because you no longer excite us in the way that you once did. I understand, of course, from my observations of your kind, that you regard it as a natural, understandable, indeed potentially necessary progression towards a relationship settling down, that the healthy and mature relationship should progress, that after a dizzying honeymoon period, the relationship moves to something of a deep-seated position, where that initial buzz of excitement has faded to be replaced by something long-lasting, substantial and fulfilling. Should you appreciate your relationship with us, with regard to this mindset, this doesn't work for us. You may regard us as a natural and an understandable and indeed potentially necessary progression, but we do not. Your failure to admire us in the way you once did, or at least the way that is perceived by us, your demonstration of love, adoration and such like becomes lessened. The fact that you continue to admire us in the way that you did, that you love us in the way that you do, it becomes stale. You provide us with so much of it that the shine becomes lost. And therefore, as a consequence of this, the provision of your positive fuel becomes stale, and therefore this threatens to weaken us. And therefore, in order to defend ourselves, we then switch to the devaluation and extract the negative fuel from you, which creates contrast and powers us to the extent that is required. Staleness invariably occurs with the intimate partner primary source and possibly the non-intimate partner primary source because those are the individuals that we spend the most time with, most time interacting with, communicating with, spending time with. It is unusual for the positive fuel from a secondary source and certainly from a tertiary source become stale because we don't draw on it as often as enough. And therefore, that is why devaluation of a secondary or tertiary source is highly unlikely for reasons of the fuel becoming stale. Within this category, it's also worth explaining that the other reason that devaluation can occur, linked to the fuel provision, is that you aren't providing it as frequently or as often as you ought to do, and in not in large enough amounts. Again, this does not necessarily pose such a risk for the secondary and tertiary sources, because the narcissist's expectation of fuel provision from those sources isn't that substantial. You're important in the fuel matrix, but not the most important. 
And therefore, the narcissist doesn't have an expectation that the secondary source is going to meet all of the fuel needs or a large extent, or to do so to a large extent. Instead, again, it is the intimate partner primary source or non-intimate partner primary source that falls foul. Accordingly, the first basis on which you'll be devalued is appertaining to fuel provision. Either it becomes stale, where you have been consistent in a high level of the provision of the fuel, or if for some reason you have inadvertently been rationing it, and you don't invariably choose to do so, it just happens, we perceive that you're not providing us with the level of fuel to, in terms of frequency and amount to the extent that you should be doing, and therefore you become devalued by way of punishment for that. There is no conscious decision taken in that regard by an unaware narcissist. It just happens at a particular point. And usually, it's somewhere around the 6th month to the 18th month, 18 month mark, that this will occur. Sometimes shorter, sometimes a little bit longer. But generally, that's the time period within the golden period between the narcissist and the intimate partner, primary source, when this occurs. So the first reason appertains to fuel provision. Either you pump out lots of it and it becomes boring to us and stale, so we devalue you to create a contrast, or you're not providing us at the level that you ought to be. You are the primary source. You should be providing us with most of this fuel, and therefore if you're not doing so in terms of amount and frequency, you're letting us down, and therefore you must be punished. The second basis for devaluation occurs as a consequence of you creating a threat to our control. Our sense of entitlement, our inability to recognise and respect boundaries, and of course this overwhelming need for control means that we have to have you do what we want, and that you must not pin us with accountability or offend our sense of entitlement. If you start to behave in a particular manner whereby you are threatening our control, and this happens on a repeated basis, the golden period will come to an end, and you will be devalued, and you'll be pushed into the sustained devaluation. Whilst this occasionally occurs, it is more likely that it is the fuel provision which results in the sustained devaluation occurring for the intimate partner primary source. Indeed, where you might threaten control during seduction, because our narcissism has our eyes on the main prize, embedding you as the intimate partner primary source, we may even deal with threats to control in a benign way, using charm or some kind of promise of reward, future faking for instance. With secondary and tertiary sources, where you threaten control, then, in certain instances, dependent upon of course the presence of a facade, you will receive a devaluing behaviour to get you back in line, to bring you back under control. Accordingly, where you pose a threat to our control, there is a likelihood, although it is not guaranteed, because it depends where you are in the dynamic with the narcissist, your position in the fuel matrix, and, for instance, whether a facade is operated and the circumstances in which your defiance to our control occurs, it is not the case that you will always be treated in a malign fashion, but usually this will be, because giving you that response of a malign behaviour is more likely to cause you to come under our control more effectively. A short silent treatment, an insult, some malign triangulation by comparing you unfavourably with somebody else. Accordingly, the second basis is where you threaten our control, and this results in a devaluing behaviour being selected by the narcissism, where unaware, or consciously by the aware narcissist, to deal with your threat to control, assert control over you, and nullify the threat. The third instance which can cause devaluing behaviour is where you see through us. If we apprehend that you are working us out, if we perceive that you have been influenced by something else and you're joining the dots, if we gauge that you are beginning to realise what we are and what we are doing, then we must strike first in order to shock and awe you into submission once more and dispel your fabrications. You may well be right, but we are not going to accept you being right. We will switch to the devaluation in order to unleash all those manipulations which will confuse you, drain you, and most of all make out that it is all your fault. 
We, of course, in our perspective, have done nothing wrong other than love you with a perfect love, or be a great friend, or loyal family member. And instead, you, from our perspective, have brought this on yourself, through your lies about what you are, and your lies about us, and your treachery. Remember, where is, is an aware narcissist, we perceive that you are working out what we are. And therefore, we need to dis dissuade you from continuing on this course. Indeed, if you continued along this course for too long, this can result in disengagement occurring. And I've explained elsewhere why this is one of the reasons for disengagement. With an unaware narcissist, the position is different. The narcissist isn't aware that you are working out that you're dealing with an abuser or a narcissist. It is in effect sensed, the narcissism operating on the narcissist's behalf and the unconscious to identify that your behaviours aren't quite what they are in terms of ensuring that you are compliant. In a way, it is linked to a threat to control but is in a category of its own. For instance, as, I, as per the second basis, mentioned earlier, you can threaten our control, for instance, by saying, where the hell have you been? You said you'd be here three hours ago. That threatens to pin us with accountability and threatens our sense of entitlement, which then results in a response from us to devalue you, to bring you back into line. However, if your reactions are being reduced because perhaps you're trying to implement some form of no contact with us, or you're commenting in a particular way which suggests that you're becoming aware of what's going on, that you're being manipulated, for instance, then the narcissism picks up on this in an unaware narcissist and responds by asserting a devaluing behaviour with the view of causing you to stop acting in that particular fashion. The fourth reason is the hoover opportunity. This isn't a hoover against you. Instead, it is the opportunity which suddenly arises to hoover a predecessor. This person may have been disengaged from and moved away from our sphere of influence, or they have escaped and done likewise, but now something has happened whereby they have come back into our sphere of influence. The promise of that sweet and powerful hoover fuel will outweigh the positive fuel that you are currently providing us with. The prospect, therefore, of getting this hoover fuel means that we want to focus our attention on the predecessor and hoover them. We, of course, won't get shot of you, not yet, because that would leave us in between primary sources. And instead, we commence the hoover to seduce again your predecessor, and, thus because they have appeared on the horizon, they make you look the less desirable option. This will then cause us to question why we are with you, to regard you as a mistake, and therefore we switch to devaluing you as we begin the seduction of them once again. Should the hoover fail, expect the golden period to be reinstated for you with another sudden switch. Should it, should it succeed and we began to tie the predecessor back to us once more, then the devaluation will worsen and you are hurtling towards, devaluate, you are hurtling towards disengagement. A sudden switch to devaluation, particularly as well early in your relationship with the narcissist, meaning that your fuel hasn't become stale and there aren't any issues with regard to you threatening control, because why would there be? You are in the golden period, means that it may well mean that one of your predecessors, a former intimate partner primary source, has come back on the radar and this opportunity for the highest potency of fuel proves too tempting to the narcissist. Understand, the reappearance of the former intimate partner primary source does not automatically mean that you will be placed into devaluation, but it is an explanation for devaluation when it does occur. Again, this is not something that would happen necessarily with secondary sources, although it could do. This is mainly something that happens to the intimate partner primary source. Number five. The final reason for you being placed in devaluation is the concept of total control. We must control you. This is fundamental to the dynamic between us. Yet, as a further example of the double standards by which we engage in, we want to control you, and if you disobey us and threaten that control, we will commence your devaluation. However, if we believe, i.e. we sense, that we have obtained total control over you, then devaluation will occur 
because inherently we recognize that you'll do anything that we want and we will just use you to validate ourselves in the event that other more exciting prospects fail to fuel us during the course of the day. You, in effect, become relegated to the reliable and dependable. And because you are actually doing precisely what we want, but through our warped logic, this equates to you no longer being special. Accordingly, we need to make you special to us once again, and we do this through devaluation. We will not cast you aside when we've achieved total control, not at all. This state of affairs brings with it considerable benefits, but they will now be channeled through the filter of devaluation and not idealization. It is symptomatic of the bizarre, when judged from your perspective, of course, logic that we apply that when you finally do the very thing that we want, we turn against you and begin your devaluation. A classic example of this follows getting married to the narcissist. This signals to the narcissist a position of total control and can then lead to devaluation occurring so much as on the wedding night. And I've dealt with numerous individuals through consultation who found themselves in that very situation. They thought the golden period would continue. They thought that devaluation, when they have started to learn all about the narcissistic dynamic, they thought that devaluation would have taken place much, much later. But they've realised that it happened the night of the, the wedding, or perhaps on the honeymoon. And the reason is this concept of total control, that the narcissist senses as a consequence of the marriage, that you now are completely owned and controlled by the narcissist, and therefore the switch occurs. Again, just because total control is reached doesn't mean that devaluation will always occur. Some narcissists will not do so. But where you are struggling to understand why you have been devalued, the concept of total control may well be an explanation. Accordingly, when it comes to the issue of devaluing you, whether you're an intimate partner, primary source, secondary source, or tertiary source, there are different reasons. It is usually the intimate partner, primary source that gets the worst sustained devaluation, and everything that I've explained in this video will apply to them. It is less so with regard to the secondary sources. Secondary sources generally are devalued as a consequence of you threatening our control, because somehow you've started to see through us, possibly because of a new Hoover opportunity by a different appliance coming along, and is less likely as a consequence of total control, and is a less likelihood of a consequence of it being stale or diminished fuel provision. With regard to the intimate partner primary source, there are five potential reasons for devaluation, namely, fuel provision becomes stale or fuel provision is diminished, or not frequent enough, threat to control, you see through us, the Hoover opportunity, and the concept of total control. How then do you deal with all of this? Well, the short answer is you can't. Any of these five reasons may suddenly apply without warning, and thus your devaluation begins, where sustained for intimate partner primary source or corrective for all other appliances. You cannot avoid it, and you could not avoid it. You, from your perspective, did nothing wrong but you did everything wrong from our perspective. There is nothing that you can do to avoid this happening, because once the trigger happens, the devaluation will follow. What you need to understand is that knowing this is how we are, knowing that there was nothing that you can do, or you could ever have done to change the outcome, you at now least have this knowledge, and through it you can attain freedom from the doubt, uncertainty, and sheer bewilderment of wondering why it happened, and instead progress your no-contact regime to stop it from happening again. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.